another cause for concern for parents in Japan's devastated northeast. A medical consulting firm in Tokyo has detected radioactive material in the urine of 104 children in Fukushima Prefecture, site of the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The firm collected urine from children aged six or younger in Minamisoma City to check for possible internal radiation exposure. Of 1,500 samples that have been analyzed so far, 7% contain traces of radioactive cesium. The levels of cesium detected were mostly between 20 and 30 becquerels per liter, which is just slightly above the detection limit. The medical consulting firm says the level of internal exposure does not pose a threat to health. The director at the National Institute of Radiological Sciences, Makoto Akashi, says that although the test results need verification, they do point to the possibility of internal exposure in children in Fukushima. Japan's pledge to double the consumption tax in phases by the middle of this decade has been included in a document agreed on by G20 leaders. The leaders compiled an action plan for growth and jobs on Friday, along with a declaration. The plan includes Japan's pledge to overhaul its social security and tax systems and raise the consumption tax in phases to 10 percent by mid-decade. During the G20 summit, Prime Minister Yoshihiko Noda outlined the tax reform plan in a speech, effectively making it an international commitment. The government will submit the bill to the Diet by the end of this fiscal year. I'll then seek a mandate from the people before actually raising the tax. His comment suggests that the Prime Minister will dismiss the lower house and call a general election after enacting the related bills. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, well you say there's no solution to the waste, but there is a solution to the waste, and the solution to the waste is to just leave it exactly where it is and to have somebody look at it for, for a million years, you know. So, so they just have to have all these zombies who are there at the moment, sitting there doing nothing, who are going to just have to sit there and their children are going to sit there and their children's children and so on, looking at the waste and making sure that it doesn't leak out of the tanks. And if it starts to look like it's going to leak out of the tanks, they build another tank around that tank and then they build another tank around the tank that they built around that tank and so on, you know, to infinity. And that is a solution to the waste, because then the waste will just stay where it is now and it won't get any worse. And if they make more waste, they'll have to put it inside that tank and leave it there. And as far as contaminated land is concerned, and places like Sellafield and all that, they'll just have to put a fence around it and say, this is contaminated land, do not enter. And so that's the best we can do. I mean, it doesn't help to put it down the hole in the ground. I mean, you may as well put it somewhere where you can keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't escape. So that's the solution. And why not put a hole in the ground? Ah, well, because then if something goes wrong, you can't do anything about it. That's the point. And what could be, could go wrong there? Oh, God, well, loads of things could go wrong. I mean, the main thing that would go wrong is that it go, it's, it's a hole in, in the ground is not a secured depository, you know? I mean, you put it into a hole in the ground, and then there's a crack in the hole in the ground, or maybe there's a, an earthquake, or, or maybe there's a fault that you didn't know about, or maybe there's some water movement that, that changes over a period of time. And we're talking geological time scale, so, you know, just about everywhere where they've suggested putting it in a hole in the ground has had a geological um, fault occurring, you know, uh, uh, in, in the last thousand years. Never mind about, you know, the next million years or whatever it is it has for the half-life of these uraniums and plutoniums. So you can't, you can't actually guarantee that if you put it in a hole in the ground, something won't go wrong. And you can't pull it out of the hole in the ground, that's the point. I mean, the, the, the Forshmark idea is not one in which they put it down in the hole in the ground and then they can take it out if something goes wrong. They can't. They just pop it down and pop the next one down and pop the next one down and so on and send it all down there and then they seal it all up. But if something goes wrong, then they can't do anything. Whereas if it's where it is at the moment, at Sellafield or wherever it is, above ground or in some kind of big hangar or big kind of area where they kind of look at it, then they can look at it. And if something goes wrong and they've got all their detectors and their Geiger counters and whatnot, then they can just repackage it and put something around it. But they have to sit there? Yeah, they have to sit there forever, absolutely, yeah, sure. Well, it serves them right, isn't it? They shouldn't have made it in the first place.
And I've no doubt they'll pay them a lot of money for sitting there. <laughs> so yeah, they can sit there. And, and, I mean, maybe they should have special uniforms, like, you know, guard of the nuclear waste, and they could have, like, special kind of green uniforms with special badges, like Superman or something, you know, that make them feel good. <laughs> I've always thought it quite good to have special uniforms. In all the science fiction stories, they did special uniforms, you know. So you could say, what's your daddy do? Oh, he's a god of the nuclear waste. Oh, no. <laughs> what a useful job, George. Yes, it is, isn't it? In any disaster, your livestock need protection, too. In case of nuclear attack, Radiation is as dangerous to animals as it is to people. A good animal shelter is a two-story basement-type barn with a hay-filled loft. You can get better protection by piling hay along the sides of the building. This gives more shielding, and shielding cuts the radiation danger. There are many more farm facilities that can be adapted to serve as some kind of shelter. For detailed information, get your free copy of Your Livestock Can Survive Fallout. In an emergency, shelter your livestock, then take shelter yourself. During any disaster, natural or nuclear, you may be forced to survive for a few weeks with the supplies you have on hand. Will you be prepared? we suggest you store a 14-day supply of food. Choose foods your family likes that require little or no water, can be eaten without heating, are put up in one meal size, and can be rotated in your home food supply. Remember, a strong defense begins with a prepared family and ends with a protected nation. Be prepared. Store your emergency food supply today. No one can predict the future. The most we can do is to be prepared for whatever might happen. That's why we carry auto, fire, and life insurance. But what about another kind of insurance? Insurance that will protect your farm from possible nuclear war. An insurance called preparedness. 